What's up? Brandon Lilly here. Um, in all my stupidity, I was trying to answer the questions while I was doing the video and ended up deleting the questions before I got through the video. So um, I apologize for that, but I've got three questions that I'm going to answer. Uh, the first one comes from my boy Jesse Bumpus. Best way to build stability in the squat. First thing, you want to look at your whole entire setup. You want to look at how when you get under the bar, where are your feet? You know, if your feet are behind the bar or they're in front of the bar, um, depending on how you use your run rack, that may start instability from the get-go. So get your feet in the right place. Next, make sure that your hips are under the bar when you start to elevate uh, or to unrack. And the other thing, you want to be tight, but you don't want to be so rigid that you shake. I've seen some people do that. Um, their tightness actually increases their instability. So it's kind of like walking a fine line of being tight enough to, to handle the weight and to, to maneuver through the squat, but being loose enough to, to actually go through the range of motion. So once you've analyzed how your setup is and once you've analyzed um, that all that is okay, from there, some training tools that you can do. Uh, one, take your belt off. This is going to teach you to use your stomach muscles, your lower back. Um, this is going to create a, you know, a new level of understanding on how to to fire those muscles. You know, one of the greatest uh, explanations I ever heard was: so many guys are taught to push out with their stomach against their belt, but really th that leaves you um, negligent of the obliques and the lower back, the the erectors. You can actually extend or distend in four directions, 360 degrees, you can push out against your belt. And that's what you need to learn to do. And one of the things that you can learn to do that, or one of the ways is by taking the belt off, because automatically you're going to be pushing for tightness. So you're going to learn to do that automatically without a belt. And then when you put the belt back on, it feels so much better, it's so much more comfortable, and you get so much more out of it, just because you know how to use your body. Next, I like the pause squat because in a pause position, if you're too far forward, you're going to fall. And if you're too far back, you're going to fall. So by going into a pause position below parallel, you know, you do this above parallel, it's pointless. But if you do a pause squat below parallel, you will actually find the ideal position for your body to be in, in the hole. Your body will find the strongest position for balance and stability. So that's why I really... Um, have turned to the pause squats as such a tool for a lot of my trainees and even for myself because you do enough of those and you actually learn the spot to hit every single time. So, you know, those are a few things that you can do. The other thing is, like I was talking yesterday, gaining shoulder mobility to actually be able to bring the bar in or bring your hands in on the bar, elevate the chest and bring your elbows in, pull it, retract in the clavicles, <clears throat> to give you the tightness in the upper body and the stability. If you're all over the place and you're loose up here, how can you ever hope to get into the hole in such a position? You need to erect your body, big stomach, big obliques, big lower back. Express yourself 360, de 360 degrees against your belt and then start your descent. Um, you know, some people argue about hips back, you know, or knees breaking first. I've seen guys be successful both ways. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, and have that argument because I've seen success both ways and I'm not one to, to debate, you know, things that work for other people. So all I can tell you is that I know that I tend to break in my knees a little bit before I do my hips. And I used to be one of the guys that would sit back and reach, you know, like a geared squat. But what I found is as long as my butt is pushed back, I just tend to squat straight down with a butt back position and that allows me to keep my shoulders retracted, head up, chest up, and I find a balance point in that direction. So hope that helps you, Jesse. We'll work on it Sunday when you come down. Larry asks, what is my approach to nutrition now compared to a couple years ago? Um, and probably one of the best compliments I ever got was from a guy in Australia. He told me that, you know, a few years ago I was an amateur. And, you know, the way that I approached things was as an amateur. You know, I ate pizza, McDonald's, whatever I could do to get in calories. 
But he said it's been nice to watch me to progress as a professional. This is somebody else's words. This isn't me saying I'm a professional because I think the term professional in powerlifting is kind of a, an oxymoron. But it was nice to hear him say that because that's kind of, in reality, that's what it is. As I've gotten more focused on nutrition, as I've paid more attention to what nutrition can do for me as a lifter, I've become a better lifter. So, you know, I've traded those uh, fast food meals for healthy food. And one of the things that I want to kind of express to people, the best analogy that I know of is that your body is a vehicle, you know, and it's like an engine. And if you were to build a race car and you were to put a supercharger on it, and you were to put, you know, the, the perfect suspension, the perfect transmission, the perfect rear end, tires, all the aerodynamics were perfectly in, in check. And then you put, you know, some low grade um, bulk fuel in there. Yeah, you could run, you know, you could run the vehicle, but, you know, your your, your supercharger is not going to work as well, um, the pistons aren't going to fire as rapidly, you know, you're just going to have, you're just going to have lower performance, and that's the argument that I will make with, with higher quality food. By putting higher quality food in your body, it makes all the body's processes work better. So if you're putting in supplementation, if you're using pharmaceuticals, those things will function more properly because of the food that you're putting into your body is a higher quality food. Um, you know, and I've read studies on it. I've heard, I've talked to coaches uh, from around the world that really planted that seed of thought in my head. You know, um, one of the best things in talking to Shaco was, you know, I point blank asked him about drugs, and he said, you know, he's not a doctor. He said he doesn't understand all that stuff. He says all he knows is while we've been sitting here talking about drugs, Kirill's been sitting in the corner putting potatoes in his mouth. And what he meant by that, or what I took it to mean was, we can sit here and argue about what drugs, what supplements, what nutrition plan is best, but the best plan for a power lifter or for any kind of strength athlete is good quality food and you know high calories. Um, you know, that's one of the things. You're not going to be a top producing lifter on low calories. You know, you can look at Dan Green or you can look at Stan Everding. Those guys are massive and they're ripped, but they're not on low calorie diets. That's one of the things that people don't understand. They're eating just enough calories for their body's performance, but they are definitely not low calorie. They eat a ton of food. If you've ever spent any time around Stan or Dan or if you ever get the opportunity to go to a meet where they're at, you will see that the majority of the time they're eating food, whether it's through a shake, whether it's through whole food, they're putting something into their body at all times because they understand how important that fuel is. So, you know, that's kind of what I took away from the super training meet that I did in November of 2012. You know, I looked at all these guys and I, I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I'm the fat boy walking around and these guys are much stronger than me. These guys are much better conditioned than me. And they pay attention to their diet. Most of them had um, dietitians that they work with. So that's why I hired John Meadows. He's got me on a plan that allows me to eat certain foods on training days, certain foods on off days. So the, the monotony of it all is, uh, is kind of broken up a little bit. But when powerlifters start learning that their body, <clears throat> their body is like an engine and the higher grade food that you put in there will not only make you better as a lifter, but it will make everything that you put into your body better that's when you're going to start getting the benefit of, of real nutrition. So that's the best answer I can give you there, Larry. Hope it helps. Eric Downey, best way to wear the low bar lower or learn to. This is something that I'm actually in the process of doing right now. You know, um, I was typically a, on top of the traps high bar squatter with a with a wide stance, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, because it it took the best of two kinds of squats and tried to blend them and it doesn't really work that well so what I've done is I've lowered the bar about an inch to an inch and a half so it actually shelves across the middle of my traps onto my rear delts I know Eric Lillibridge is working with, with something very similar and in doing this what I've noticed is I get a little bit more um, elbow torque and bicep pain so what I've done there is I've started doing a lot even more shoulder mobility than I had been before. 
I do some compression wraps on my bicep. I do a lot of bicep stretching. I actually train my fucking biceps. Um, that was one of the dumbest things that was ever introduced to powerlifters, that you don't need bicep strength. Um, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I've started training my biceps, and it's made, you know, I believe it's made the tendon stronger. It's made the muscles stronger. It's actually given me the ability to supinate my wrist again because I before I couldn't even get my hands on a barbell with two hands. So by forcing myself to work that, um, I'm not working with anything crazy. I'm not trying to curl 225 or something like that. You know, even curling 95 pounds on a straight bar really opens my wrist up, which opens the, the tendons up and the, the biceps. So, you know, just work on mobility. Take it slow. Don't. There's no commitment that says, or there's no rule that says you have to go from high bar all the way down to a low bar like Milanichev. Work your way down slowly. You know, half inch at a time. That's what I did. Um, I actually did a meet a half inch lower. Then a meet the next meet was a half inch lower. And at Capo, I was about an inch to an inch and a quarter lower than my trap squat. So, you know, take your time. Build it over a course of ten weeks. There's no. There's no rush to it. Um, and there's no rule book that says you have to go all the way down. Find what's comfortable for you, um, you know, and allow yourself to, to, to go by feel. Um, next question, Luke Bright. Avoid low back pain while sitting back in the squat. You know, I'm going to quote Louis Simmons on this because I do think it holds a lot of truth. If, uh, if something hurts or something gets hurt, it hurts because it's weak. So the question is not... How do you avoid low back pain while sitting back in the squat? It's how do you strengthen your back to be able to accommodate a low, you know, sitting back in the squat. Um, you know, and that comes down to my favorite things. Good mornings for repetitions. Avoid the max effort good morning type crap. Just do a lot of repetitions with good weight. Like myself, I use anywhere from 275 to 365. You know, three reps to eight to ten reps. Really build those muscles up. Don't don't just try to beat them to death, but actually build muscle in your back. Um, the other things that I do, uh, it, it's not necessarily going to help the lower back, but it's going to help you maintain an arch, and it's going to help you keep your chest up. A lot of shrug work, a lot of lat work. I do lats every single day um, that I train. And, um, you know, deadlifts, that's going to help your back. Anything that you can do to help your back, but also start stretching. I would bet you that your hamstrings are so tight that when you start sitting back, it starts pulling on your lower back. Um, and a lot of guys go through this in powerlifting because powerlifters are pretty stupid and they don't stretch most of the time. Start stretching. Elongate your hamstrings. Start stretching your lower back. Start doing some mobility work with your lower back along with those back strengthening exercises, and I bet the pain goes away. So... I covered four questions, um, usually try to cover three, but I thought I had four really good questions today. I'm going to be doing this again tomorrow and the next day and the next day, so I appreciate you guys checking in. I appreciate everybody that took the time to ask questions, and I look forward to doing this again, so I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks.